evening. Um, Ricky Grant from um, Suffolk County District Attorney's Office was unable to be here today. So we have um, Jessica Fratelli, Assistant um, Attorney General, uh, here to speak with us. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry that Ricky couldn't be here today, but he asked me to fill in, given that I am a resident in the North End. Um, Ricky is the Chief of Community Engagement. I'm an Assistant District Attorney in the um, Main Felony Bureau at the DA's office. Before that, I worked in the Central Division, which um, is the jurisdiction of the North End. I also worked in the Roxbury Division, which is in the jurisdiction of Roxbury, Mad Pan, and parts of Dorchester. So I know that tonight you wanted to address issues of homelessness and substance abuse. Um, I, in my capacity as an ADA, have seen how those issues culminate in the criminal justice system, both the intersection of um, homelessness, drug abuse, substance abuse, mental health issues, I've prosecuted drug distribution. Um, so I, it's a broad topic. I don't know if you guys have specific concerns or questions that you want to address, whether it be the DA's policy about um, possession or something like that. But if anyone has questions, I think that that can help me more hear my conversation with you. I, I guess um, so. I guess one of the policies, not I guess one of the policies, has been to with the low level violent, non-violent crimes, to kind of divert those away from prosecution or anything like that. I just don't know how's that working so far. Are you seeing any benefits to that, or what are you seeing the outcomes from that? So, as far as low level crimes that have been diverted, to get diverted in Massachusetts, you need to meet certain criteria. So, for instance, say someone doesn't have a criminal record, um, that is eligible for a diversion. A judge can divert that over the Commonwealth objection um, at any time that they want to. Certain crimes are not eligible for diversion. So certain crimes like shoplifting, um, possession, lower level crimes can be diverted over our objection. When a person has an extremely long board of probation record that shows a pattern of them committing that crime over and over again, my experience both in Roxbury Central um, is that they aren't diverted. I think most of the cases that have always been diverted are possession cases and that kind of over Perhaps into the interest that your group has in um, narcotics use in your community. So possession, even before D.A. Rollins came in, was not diverted, but the Commonwealth of Massachusetts doesn't necessarily prosecute possession, both because of the theory that it's a public health issue and that prosecuting people, arresting them, sending them to jail for a, um, a substance abuse habit is not the way to answer. Um, that problem in our community. The second um, prong of that being that the state of the, the drug lab in Massachusetts, even, at, even for a while before this, is that the drug lab can't test all the drugs that are recovered in Massachusetts, so they prioritize drug distribution and trafficking. So possession is at the, top, at the bottom of the priority list. So it has been not prosecuted for a very long time, and a lot of alternatives <coughs> to prosecution are treatment or things like that that more address the underlying issues of substance abuse disorders. Um, I, I know that, well, recently, what, two months ago, we had an incident with a child uh, accidentally getting stuck with a, a, a needle over in uh, Prado, and I just know that it's something that ever, that I think we we've all seen kind of increase over I mean, especially the past maybe like two three years. I mean, I've the homelessness um, and needles on the street and just more drug use and more people doing drugs coming into the neighborhood. Um, what what do you think? What would you recommend or what can we do um, as residents of the North End to improve on that? Or what can we do to um, make sure that our neighborhoods staying safe and no one's getting hurt? Absolutely. I think that the North End, the South End, I work in Roxbury, so Roxbury had a tremendous um, problem with needles being on the, the ground, especially in the Melnia Cass um, Mass Ave area, and I think that this is where there's an intersection of a public health crisis and also um, what, what can the criminal justice system do alone versus what can the criminal justice system do with other social <coughs> services to address the underlying issues at play here. And I don't think the solution has ever been, and I don't think the DA um, believes this either, has been to incarcerate people. I think incarceration um, takes people off the street. I think no, if they don't have the services to address their substance abuse issues when they are released from incarceration, then it's a cycle of continuing um, substance abuse that's not addressed. Okay. Um, I want to ask a question about that. Yes, so what can we do? As a community in the North End? Yes, I think that was the question. Yeah. What can we do? I, think I mean, I understand what the court can't do. I think I mean, your answer, but what can we do? I think that we need to work with um, 
services that the city of Boston has to address the underlying issues of substance abuse, um, whether it be getting people into rehabilitation programs or getting services out into the community um, to address that is the way that has proven successful in the past. So how do we do that? I think it's going to be in, in coordination with social services in the city of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay, so if I see somebody shooting up in the park, what do I do? You call 911. Okay, and then what? Somebody... And then the police can respond and they can either get people services. Um, when you have a family member, say, you have a family member that's arrested in the criminal justice system and they're brought into court, their family members <coughs> or a member of the court community can petition to section them and have them evaluated for substance abuse issues and then send them instead of being locked up at um, Nashua Street or South Bay, they can go to a service, a rehabilitation service, and if they're civilly committed to receive those services. But isn't that their choice? No, if you're, if you're civilly committed, you have to go into that service. Isn't that a court process, though? It's a civil process, but it is in conjunction with the arraignment with the criminal system um, that more adequately addresses the underlying issues. So how many times would a, would a person have to be picked up by the police for them to be put into a, you know, a program to help them with their... <clears throat> I've seen it happen a, a number of times. I've seen parents come. I've, um, when I, I was in Roxbury, I see people who were picked up in Roxbury and their parents came all the way from Maine to Roxbury to, to petition to have them civilly committed. My name is Don Zanarella. Uh, as far as the needles and you know kids getting stuck with them, is there a possible way to put a needle exchange somewhere close so that you know maybe people would just you know get rid of them in a specific place? I know that other parts of Boston, for instance, near BMC Hospital, I pass every day on the way to work. They do have needle collection depositories. But it's so far. <clears throat> no, I know. So I think you, as a community, if that is a priority, you could put it in a part of the North End that you think there's a lot of needles being found. And it's a decision of the community. You I think that's one too many. I agree. <laughs> yeah. But again, that's that we done, absolutely done. I, I think that's something that, again, like we could ask the city. I mean, we know, we, we primarily know the main sites yeah. where we were constantly finding them. Yeah, we could tell the park is covered in them all the time. I mean, not anymore. We're cleaning it up. We're doing a good job. We kissed it. Um, <laughs> Um, but we know the sites and it's something that we can always petition for and ask the city to help us out with and, and starting these but up. But maybe yeah. something that the not the health center could yeah. help mm -hmm. us with. Actually, yeah, yeah that's a good, a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're here mm -hmm. and they don't want it either. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they could coordinate that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Whitney Taylor, 10 Doctor Street. Thank you for being here, but I think uh, jumping off of what the gentleman said there, I think we should have for this issue, we should have somebody from the public health department here speaking with us. Uh, you know, DA Rollins is, uh, is wonderful, and I'm glad she's there, and thank you for being here. But this is not a criminal legal problem. It is a public health problem, and I would also love to be part of helping get some sharps, they're called sharps containers, um, in the neighborhood so that we can have safe disposal. And I think the North End Public Health Center is a great place to start, or with the city's Department of Public Health. Great idea. Good idea. Which, so to just back up on Brett's point, um, when we did have the public safety meeting two months ago when this issue first came up, there were representatives from BPHC, um, d and Boston Police, Homelessness Unit, and um, the Office of Recovery Services. And so they were actually, that meeting was taped too. So uh, there was a report on it on Matt's website if you want to go in. So they did kind of talk about this. And I think Brett asked the DA's office to come here as a follow-up. So, like, they are in the neighborhood. The yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad well. thing. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm sorry, I, I was not at that meeting. Yeah. No, I just um, wanted to make sure that if you needed, like, the answers from those departments, they were there, too. No, but I'm just following up, I think, is a, is a great <laughs> yeah, thing. Just, and I'd be happy to help. Yeah. Perfect. Throwing it out. Um, I, well, also, I'm just kind of confirm away. I want everyone to be aware of that. Maria, it's 311 if you see, for the Sharps right, team, if you, see any, if you see any needles. 911 if you see active drug use or drug dealing or drug selling. So that's differentiated. You don't want to call, you want to call 311 for people shooting up. You want to make sure that the, the authorities are there when you call and report it. Um, I, I also do want to touch on, is, is, it, is it possible that the injection sites, I know that's piloted in Philadelphia, I know it's something that 
um, DA Rollins has been pretty supportive of? Is it something that she would like to see in the city, in downtown? I believe so. I think that that is a priority for DA Rollins. I think um, that that was something, a platform she ran. I think that's something that she would still like to see incorporated in the city of Boston. And how would that be, how would that work, like, as, as far as, like, would it, how would it improve the situation? I think a lot of trainings that I go to um, with police chiefs who have had a lot of luck in combating the epidemic of narcotic abuse, I think that the theory of, um, the theory that has most proved, proven successful is that people seek help or they are most successful in recovery when they're ready to do it. And so a lot of the police chiefs, I know the Arlington police chief, I went, on, I went to a training where he spoke, the theory is to keep people alive long enough for them to want to help themselves or want to get through a program. And I think that that's what a safe injection site, that's what officers having Narcan, that's what that does. So helping people survive an overdose um, puts them in a position to get to the point themselves where they stay um, in an inpatient facility or they don't get released from rehab and go back and, and re-abuse narcotics. So that's what that would address. Any follow-up questions? I just have, I might be confused about these safe sites, right? So if a person goes to a safe site to inject, isn't the injection itself illegal? Yes. So how does it make it? Is it so once you go to the safe site, that injection is legal then? Or is it just? It won't be prosecuted. Is the theory of it? It won't. It won't. That's my understanding of it. I like I said, I'm a line ADA. I prosecute major felony cases. I am not a policy person. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, and again, I appreciate yeah. you being here. I know we're asking. It's a tall order, and that's why we were kind of hoping that Ricky was going to be here to speak more towards it, like the community engagement piece um, and how it's affecting the communities going forward. Um, so I, I appreciate you stepping stepping step step into the batter's box today and taking a story of this for us. Um, but I mean, so you working in the Attorney General's office, what do you think has been most successful so far? With her? And what do you think is there as much we want for the district to, I'm sorry, the <laughs> I think that a lot of things that we're doing in the community courts and the district courts are things that have been happening happening for a long time, but it's kind of focusing resources on what the underlying issues of criminal behavior is, whether that be substance abuse or whether that be mental health issues, whether that be um, homelessness or things of the nature. And I think that for a long time, people have been talking about these ideas and kind of addressing the underlying reasons that people commit offenses, at least a lot of people commit offenses, and I think that that is wonderful that there's a priority in doing that, and that's something I respect a lot. And I've seen, um, when I was in Roxbury, is when I was with DA Rollins, when I was in Central, I was with DA Connolly, so I think that that's um, something that a lot of DAs have been talking about, but it's very nice that it's a priority. I just have one other question on, about the process when you uh, prosecute the uh, defendants. Do you, uh, as it, do they have to continue without a finding and actually go to the program and then it goes on the record or is it like, uh, you know, what is it, um, basically, you know, they go to the, the, the rehab and then it, it direct, they, the charge gets dropped, yeah, you know, I mean. So there's many different dispositions yeah, well, in, the, <laughs> in the criminal system where we're talking about diversion. There's not an entry on your record. So, well, it's on your record, but there's not a finding of culpability against you. So, for instance, if you are brought to court and arraigned on a possession charge and the judge declines to arraign it, but he says that you have to go to an inpatient treatment facility and you have to stay substance abuse free with random testing for six months. So your case is basically on hold for six months. Yeah. If you complete those things, it will ultimately be dismissed. Does, does the DA or ADA like you try to basically ask the judge to be somewhat lenient? Yeah, and sometimes the judge can be lenient over the objection of the Commonwealth. There's been cool. plenty of times where I've objected to things that judges have done, and they've done it over my objection. Okay, that's interesting. So is six months the average? Not really. It really depends on the judge and the court. So um, every court in Boston has its own personality, and every judge has their own personality. So it, there's no standard disposition um, for someone who's facing these charges. But based on the literature for drug addiction, mm -hmm. is six months uh, standard, or six months not enough time? 
time for anyone to actually rehabilitate, think back into society, <coughs> and go back home and not. As far as what the, back science, system. what the science says, is as far as how long you need to be in a drug treatment mm -hmm. program, I think that as far as a civil commitment, you're civilly committed, as, and it's as long as the civil commitment lasts for how long, however long they deem it appropriate. As far as you coming in with a drug possession and the prosecutor and the judge working out a disposition, it could be six months, but that's not a standard. There's no standard on amount of time that I've seen. Any other questions for anyone in the audience or any other council members? So what are we doing about the homelessness? We still have over two people here, and we feel so bad that now that the weather is getting colder, and I know they're trying to pick them up and take them. If they refuse, there's nothing that anyone can do. As far as homelessness, I think that is your your pure public health policy. If you're not committing a crime, um, the police can move you along, but there's. Trespassing? You're you're really not in the jurisdiction of the criminal justice system. It's not trespassing. It depends where the person is. If the person is um, in someone's building, in something like that, that that'd be trespassing. But if you're just walking down Unitary Street, at the end of Unitary Street next to CVS, yeah, um, everyone usually sleeps in that little alcove. Yeah, <coughs> that's not a crime. That's a um, public health issue. <coughs> yeah. All right, so without any other further questions from anyone, um, I just want to say thank you, Jessica, very much. For that.